All right, everybody, welcome back. Another edition live at Drew's House, Joppa Afternoon Drive. Hope you're all doing well out there. My guest today, a uh, longtime friend of the show. We're going to get right to him because we end up chatting for a while. John <laughs> Monahan, Firehouse Center for the Arts. How are you, sir? Great, Drew. How are you doing? It's good to see you. Doing great. We had a little time before the show to talk. We covered a lot of ground. We did. We've we did. learned that uh, we disagree on, uh, I'm not a big fan of the email, you live by it. That's just part of how it is. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. And that's just part of how I am. I don't like it. Okay. <laughs> well, because uh, if I don't have it in like, if I don't have it saved in a spot, it's completely gone and searching through texts gets difficult. Okay. So we're different in that regard. I'm like, <laughs> don't email me. <laughs> Call me. Um, we, what else did we do? We also talked to the Red Sox. We're a little bit worried about inconsistencies. Yeah. 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 We did that. Uh, I've learned that you need the screen protector to protect the eyes. Yes. Okay. Anything else we did? I feel like we covered a lot of ground before know, we even started. I was trying to catch the people up. That's I know. All. We didn't talk about Dave Matthews yet, so I'm sure we'll get there. Probably coming up. As yeah. usual. I saw him on CNN know. the other day. Did you see that? I did not. Yeah, new song for uh, Ukraine. Oh, all right, all right. The refugees, yeah. That's Very great. Nice. I'll tell He's doing good at being in the moment. He is. Dave. But he usually, he always, he he always, he always has been. Yeah. You know, you know somebody said today uh, that there was, who were we talking about? We are talking about uh, Dane Cook. Remember that? Okay. Name? Oh, yeah. Com- oh, yeah. <laughs> comedian who, I, I know a lot of people don't like Dane Cook, but it became very popular not to like Dan Cook, it seemed. Indeed, yep. And like one of the, and there was a little bit of that with Dave, at least at one point in his career, where uh, you got the Dave Matthews eye roll thing from people. Did you feel that? Oh, yeah, because there's yeah. always people like, oh, I, I don't even know why. It's good. That frat lot of, boy thing. Frat boy thing. Yeah, well, yeah. a lot of it was that people didn't think he, could, he, was, he was a good musician. Yeah. Remember the whole, like, John Mayer, Dave Matthews? Like, John Mayer's a much better guitar oh, player than Oh, my goodness, I do remember that. Yeah, talk about two different artists. I know, talk about two completely <laughs> yeah. different, different genres, yeah. although... And John Mayer has very much gone to like the jam band True. side yeah. with uh, yeah. with um, Dead and Company, and they're both so. huge fans of each other. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. They were never against each other. I, I always feel like they're always people always want to create like that rivalry. I know between between artists. It's a real silly industry to do that in. It really it? is. Yeah. It really is. And they, they do the same thing. They do the same thing with uh, well, like sports teams and sports yeah. and sports characters. They always talk about how. Sports characters. Sports they characters, always, yes. <laughs> they always talk about how, you know, so-and-so yeah. doesn't like each other. But the fact is they're all, you know, yeah. they're all mostly friends at I this know. point. So Why can't we have Kobe and LeBron? Exactly. You know? Exactly. Know. Well, don't let uh, me start on LeBron and that whole thing. But. Oh, you have a whole LeBron rant? Well, no, there's not a whole rant, but right. I mean. I feel like there might be. Well, no, it's just it's yeah. just like LeBron had gone, went from being like this golden boy mm. to – you know, now he's like it's. It seems like he's all all about LeBron. Oh, I see. All about yeah. LeBron. Kind of always was though. I think. I, I guess. need a little bit of that. I mean, the guy held the decision. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. I mean, you've heard you kids me who don't remember yeah. when he was was switching teams. I think. <laughs> yes, he was going to take agency, his talents right? to South Beach. Take his talents <laughs> to South Beach. That's right. <laughs> to go to Miami. He held his own special with his own crowd and That's his old right. host. Who was that? Costa? Bob Costa? I think? No, it was uh, Jim Gray. Jim Gray. Tom yeah. Brady's guy. Tom Brady's guy. That's right. Another guy. <laughs> Love Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, he's getting annoying too, isn't God, he? God, he really is. Man, he really is. I mean, it's still not be Tom, but we're going to dump that. But you know what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got that. <laughs> what are we saying this out loud for? But uh, but it's you know, in general though, both of those guys fall into the same category. LeBron and Tom, they can be a little bit annoying. Yeah. But if that's all we complain about with them, like well, of course. I mean, I mean, I would, in the spotlight I would, all the time. I would also rather have Tom Brady on my team any day of the week. Yeah. Love you, Mac. But yeah, you know, and I'm, but I'm sure you'll get there. That's gonna be a mistake, right? Yeah. I mean, I know that we're rebuilding, and I mean, Tom's already got one more. I feel like that already makes it a mistake. I know. I know. But. You know, yeah. you can't, we can only live in glory for so long. True. You know, we have to, we have to come down to earth at some point. So I guess after 20 yeah. years of, of you know, doing everything he could for, yeah. for our, for our region, we can't, we can't begrudge him any. We won't. We'll you know, stop. We won't. I'm just, and like I said, they're in the spotlight so much that I feel like that's a very tough lifestyle. Absolutely. Like to be, you know. You know, we get a, we get a little taste of it with our no, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> but no, like seriously, people watching your every move, magazines, stories that aren't true, whatever. I mean, that's yeah. tough. It know? is tough. It's tough not to screw up. Like to, to think that they have only had those mistakes. By all cases, both men are great dads, they're great family men. They've lived good lives. So yeah. you know, we'll lay off them. We will. We Just will. they're a little annoying sometimes. Oh, yeah. If they could both come back to Boston, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That'd be good. Uh, anyway, what are, we, what are you here for again? Although, what do you love Jason Tatum? <laughs> oh, that was did fun. you watch that game on I Sunday did, night? Yeah. What a I was game. dozing off because I had like the Easter uh, celebration yeah. early. Yeah. So I had like, uh, we had an early start and. You know, sometimes I nap when I have early starts. That's fair. I'm well, just also, also the, the Red Sox game is kind of a snoozer. I mean, it, yeah. was, it took a while for that to break open yeah. and go right into that game. And that game was, 
that was pretty exciting. But man, that ending. Yeah, that ending was. It doesn't get. Really I I just uh, read the other day that that was the only buzzer beater playoff win for the Celtics, like actually at the buzzer, where there were Look no more that. possessions. Look at that. Well, chance of that all the uh, all the wins they've had in Celtics history. I know, but imagine somebody somebody had to look up that stat, and there was somebody that had oh, that stat. Ready who is to go. that person? They're brilliant. Whoever whoever it is, and whoever has that job has like probably one of the coolest jobs in yeah. in, in sports. Maybe. Again, I feel like you have to be an email guy because I'm not sure that's my thing. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, but I guess, I guess, you know, they do, they do a lot of that research, which, yeah. is, which I think, you know, if that's, if that's your thing, I guess, yeah. can be, you know, can be, can be a lot of fun. So that actually brings us, brings me, brings up something that I thought was, I think is really interesting. Okay. Um, we just did, uh, uh, the firehouse, but we actually did it up in Portsmouth because we were doing our own show down at the firehouse this, this past March. We just did a show, um, about, all about stats. Uh, mm. It was a really, it was a, it was a great show. It was written by um, by a, by a good friend of mine who actually now is a is a coworker at the uh, at the firehouse. His name is Bretton Reese, and he wrote this play called Stat Geek and Natick. Interesting. So what that was about was about his friend, um, his friend David, who um, uh, would call into call into Felger and Maz. I don't know if I, I don't know if I can talk about other radio shows. No, you're but. you're fine. <laughs> We'll be fine. He would he would he would call into Felger and Maz, and he wouldn't give his name. He would give himself he would he would uh, call himself the Stat Geek and oh. and that was all he did. He did all all stats and talked about all of you know all of the different ways that you can that you can look at you can look at it you can look at numbers. At one point, he talked about how um, uh, oh gosh, I can't remember Greg Oden. Greg Oden was actually uh, based on the stats was actually a better player than Kevin Durant. Because you know they went one Picked two before Kevin, right? Yeah. They went one yeah. two in that in that draft, and and Felger Masters went off on him, being like, "How can you possibly say that?" And he talked about how he he had to like really dig yeah, yeah. to find that, and you can do that with all you know with all so, with all sorts of stats. Um, Is it talking so, about how you can sway a story too, depending on what stats you're looking so for? So what the what it actually what the story is actually about is it's it's shining light on you know unfortunately David had an eating disorder, oh. um, and he passed away uh, six or seven years ago. Okay. Um, and so this was this was done in done in homage to him, which is oh. which has been really great. We've been able to produce it a couple different times, but it just goes to show the the, the interesting ways that you can that you can that you can come up with with stats mm. and you can and you can figure that you, know, you can figure that stuff. Out. He, was, he was a he was a um, he was a CPA. He was he was all he was very much a numbers guy. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's it's been very special for for us to be able to you know keep his legacy going. Um, and that is how you transition from stats into the firehouse. Oh, what a lesson. That was a, a, a lesson in firehouse, a lesson in radio, a lesson in transition writing. That we, that is what we call a segue, yeah, Drew. That's beautiful stuff. Yeah, so yeah, we should talk about the firehouse at some point. Here we go. Uh, how's it going over there, man? It seems like we're it's coming good. alive it's everywhere. Good. That's good. Yeah, you know, we're, we're slowly, but surely, uh, slowly but surely coming back. We had a couple of, of really strong... Um, shows in in february and march um that theatrically they were they were yeah. fantastic is that how you grade yourself post show you go, you know what very strong <laughs> very average tonight. very average very, yeah i mean it, there are there are a lot of different there are a lot of different things that yeah. you know that go into it you know the quality of the quality of the piece the actors how people feel their mm. reactions you know their reactions afterwards a lot of why i got into into doing this is because like, i don't know I don't know if you know this about me, but I started out on stage. I did know that. Yeah, yeah we've yeah. talked about that. Yeah, yeah I'm sure saying. probably every yeah. single time. Um, <laughs> but what ultimately what ultimately led me yeah. to that to that um, to that back that backstage side was just seeing the smile on people's faces right. and people not necessarily knowing that I had anything to do with it, mm -hmm. um, and just being able to bring that sort of that sort of joy uh -huh. to 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 folks. Um, it's lovely. And, and that was a lot of that was a lot of what we were doing with um, over the past two years when we started doing the outdoor shows. Mm -hmm. Now that we're back, you know, we're back inside. We're really focusing on the quality yeah. of the of the shows that we have that we have going on. Um, we have some good ones coming up. We just had a couple of sold out shows. It's always good, which is really great. Yeah. A comedy show, and then a, um, and then the other one was a uh, was like was a cabaret night with two uh, two Broadway stars. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Allison Case, who lives here in town. Okay. Um, she was she was in the uh, most recently the she was in Matilda when it was on when it was on Broadway. She was in the revival of Hair wow. when it was on, and then she also was in. Uh, on, on in a, in a Broadway show from a from a fellow you may know, uh, Trey Anastasio oh, yes. wrote yeah. a Broadway show yes. called Hands on a Hard Body. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And so she was she was in the original the original Broadway cast of that, and then she brought along her friend uh, Newberry's own Amy Spanger. Wow. Yeah. Okay. That so. is the coolest thing. I was talking to um, uh, my friend Karen Nessambetti, who I think you know from the North Shore Music from North Theater. North Shore. Yeah. Yeah. And um, she was talking about some of the plays that they've had over the years, and she said it's the, the coolest thing to put these plays together because the amount of talent that's up there like I have people who did right. this play this play and I'm like thinking back it was like I was like the biggest play in New I York know, City at the I time know. you know it's like this fascinating and then you come back home or do whatever you're doing and right. maybe they'll go back to New York City at some point but the talent's unreal it is unreal and and North Shore has has some fantastic talent North Shore is a they, their talent's a little bit different than ours. They're an equity house. Got so they have, they're a union house. Send me an email. Which is, the, the, I'll, the, the, no, I'll, I'll text you about it. I'll text you about equity versus <laughs> non-equity. And they have, I mean, they have some of the top talent that's 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 able to come to that, that venue. And it's such a, for the size of that space, mm. the, the way that they fill up that room, yeah. it's it's um, it's phenomenal. Yeah, it's a good take. Yeah, yeah. Like yours is. Like ours is. You've a got nice a nice intimate, shutout. A nice uh, intimate space. I know, you, I, know I pointed it out to you. Your, uh, I guess it was the yeah, it was our last show. Yeah. Nice firehouse shout out from a uh, great musician, Will Daly. Got to get him back. Yeah, but he uh, practically called for it. I know, I know. I mean, I actually got to, I got to reach out. Did to you, him. you went back and watched it? You of course right? I did. Yeah, yeah. Of course I did. My wife, yeah. my, my, I'm watching. My, my wife goes, "Did you just watch that so you could hear your name?" And you did, didn't you? <laughs> and I was like, I was told my name. And I had to, I had to see what it was. <laughs> it could have been. I it, mean, it could have been a negative. Exactly. Yeah. If I, I didn't know yeah. if I needed to, if I needed to combat something. Just have to double check. Just have to double check. Defend your name. But also, you know, it's always cool yeah. when, when musicians of Will's Carol caliber, yeah, want to come back to, want to come back to your venue. Right. I think it's, I think it's great. I mean, yeah, like I said, I think, I think he was there a few years back with the, um, when the River did one of their, oh, one of okay. their shows. Yeah. So, it's but, funny though how artists remember like the room because you mentioned how you guys are putting so much emphasis into sound and sounding yeah. great and all that. I don't know if you know this, but musicians coming out of the pandemic right now mm-hmm. are especially guys like that who are going out, you know, kind of doing solo shows by themselves, like, you know, have played with bands and all that, right. know what they're doing. But especially guys like that, like a lot of times they're getting these sound people that maybe the they're on the third or fourth sound person right now because right. staff shortage, whatever. Yeah. People didn't come back from the pandemic, and I've heard horrible stories. Unfortunately, I've seen a couple shows with artists who are really struggling yeah. with the sound, like big, big names. I won't get into who they are. That's too bad. Um, but like, you know, a lot of these guys are perfectionists, and they're like, yeah. "That's not right. Yeah, that's not right. That's, <laughs> that's not. not that's, we, let's get it right." You know, we had we had a, a band come through um, who said that when they one of the last shows they had done, they were they were thrilled with the way that the yeah. sound was coming up because they said one of the last shows they had done, uh, it was a volunteer sound guy. Wow. Yeah. So, I was at one recently. I'll just tell the story. I'll try, I'll try not to give away who or where it was because it's a great artist and it's a great place. And uh, it certainly wasn't the artist's fault. You could tell. I mean, I'm just in the room going, turn his guitar down. Mm-hmm. Like just very basic stuff. Like, yep. Guitar's too loud. And like he's uh, popping his guitar for that like, kind of drum beat that he's got built in. Yep. Nothing there. And I can see the frustration. Ugh, that's the, the worst. And like the, you know, it's just... And he's, he handled it like a pro, which was great. But I'm looking over. Everybody's kind of looking at the sound person. It looks like a maybe a 22 year old woman. You know, probably yep. not that experienced. Maybe thrown into a bad situation. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe she's great and had a bad night. Yeah. But it's just it's torture. Yeah. It's, it is. It is tough. Well, because it's tough. Because it's, it's not only is it tough. Not only is it tough for the uh, for the for the artist, but it's tough for the audience to yeah. get into it. And the and and performers feed so much off what the audience uh, is giving them back. Yep. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I I I think I told you that I had an experience like that with with one of our fate with, with one of our favorites. I don't know whether it was the sound, whether it was just the energy. Oh, it was yeah. a bad night. I was just like, ugh, I must, I'm just not feeling it tonight. Yeah, I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, which is which is tough. Um, Firehouse is sounding some, good though. We have some great energy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what Will was saying. That's why he remembered your room. Yeah, because he loved that place. Yeah. Well, the, the beauty of it is, is, the, is the intimacy yeah. of the space. You know, there's no there's no bad seat. Yeah. There's no bad seat in the house. There's nothing. You know, there's there's 
you, you can you you're you're closer than you're ever gonna be to some of these artists. Yeah, you know, and in any in any other in any other sort of venue for you know for an affordable ticket, um, which is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. You know, when you think about it. Um, yeah, so we, you know, and then we have coming, you know, coming up. We have our, we have Sarah Borges, who's fantastic. She's out of Boston. Yep. She's a great artist. Really looking forward to, really, really looking forward to having her. Glenn Miller will be here on nice. Monday, uh, and then this summer we have five shows. You heard that right, Drew. Wow. Five shows: three outdoors, two indoors. Which ones you like better? What do you like better, outdoor or indoor environment? Oh boy. Uh, well, you know, you can you can control the indoor a lot more than you can control. And it's the outdoor. out of controlled outside. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. But it's so much. Yeah. There's there's something there's something that's really um, organic about about mm. the outdoor shows. Yep. You know, especially with how you know how we're how we're running it. I'm taking a, I'm taking a page out of out of my former. Uh, my former jobs book, and we're gonna do it where where all the outdoor shows are are free to, free of charge, on with a suggested donation. Oh, I'm trying to get people to come in and uh, and 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 you know see the show, see some theater. People who may not have the opportunity otherwise, which is a big part of what we like, what we want to do as a arts organization in this community. I love anyway. that model because, well, two reasons. One, yes, people maybe are struggling and want, want, want to come after the pandemic, but you also said people were crazy generous during the pandemic. Yes. And like they've realized what theaters have gone through over the last two years. So I bet you're going to get a lot of that too. I think so. I mean, I hope so. Yeah. But, you know, at the at the end of the day, I think what people what people tend to realize, what they tend to recognize, and I, I think I've told you this before, is that when when everything in the world is, mm-hmm. is seems so terrible, yeah. The one thing you you can always return to is you know is is coffee. music. Oh, sorry. I, was, I thought <laughs> well, it was coffee's important. <laughs> coffee's important. I thought it was but coffee. But it's always but it's always the arts. Yeah. It's always music. It's always your favorite TV show. It's yeah. always you know whatever whatever seems to be bothering you. You you put in your earbuds or you for for a couple hours yeah. and and you know you go for a walk. You go for a run. You just kind of chill out. Yeah. Um, and it, it just kind of brings centers you again was there a uh, time over the last two years i mean you stayed upbeat pretty much every time we talked to you but i knew times were tough over oh, yeah. there was there a moment where like this date you know coming out of, i know we're technically still in a pandemic so right we'll never like be able to say we're out of it but you know we're coming back it feels like we're kind of coming back and whatever I'm trying uh, to was there a time when you pictured yourself here like on this day and like you know what maybe maybe that place isn't still going at that point like, did you ever foresee that, or did you just block your mind completely? From you mean that, that the firehouse yeah. wouldn't 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 make it through? Yeah. I never really thought that way. Yeah. Um, you know, I think that I think that if you if you if you come to that if you if you come to that point, yeah. then you're it's already too late. Too late. Yeah. It's already too late. I mean, I always I I we we stripped back everything that we you know that we could yeah there 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 was there was and 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 the, and the, the organization the firehouse itself is so important to this, this yeah. region that there was never there was never a thought in my mind that if you know if needed the um the the community wouldn't step up and yeah. and, and help out did i ever get to the point where i thought that i might be the only employee for <laughs> for longer than i was absolutely i mean i i was i was there for myself for a little over a year just you just me yeah just me and that was that was challenging yeah very challenging you know when you only have yourself to talk to a lot of emails a lot of emails yeah. less emails at that point yeah. that was a lot of that was a lot of ignoring planning emails. well that was a lot of zoom we all uh, did yeah. zoom but as that was that was a lot of planning and, and meetings. I mean, while we while we didn't do any shows you know, in the theater, we really didn't do we only, we really weren't producing something for like a month before yeah. we started doing like the the, the our, our quarabaret the the quarantine cabaret, mm-hmm. and then we did a um, uh, like a new works our new works like videos of the of the of the previous winners. And then you know we and then we did the outdoor shows the first time at, yeah. at Spencer Pierce. So for my own sanity, yeah. I needed to keep us. You know, I needed I needed to make sure that we were that we were keeping that we were keeping moving that we were being creative. Um, One of my greatest pandemic, well, not for you, greatest, but it is a little <laughs> funny to look back on it. Is when I was in Newburyport one day, and I, you know, you had told me you'd built the stage. Oh and yeah, you came and checked out the stage. And the next time I came, the stage had moved. Yes, like I literally went to the spot, and there was like a dead piece of grass. Yep. Not dead, but you know, it's like you could see where the. Yeah, it's definitely not dead. It was, the grass was fine. It's bad. Don't I, worry about it. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but uh, I was like, wait, the stage was here. And you're, oh, yeah, we moved, had to move. Yeah, we're in North, we went to North Andover. Built a second stage. Built a sec, built a, yeah, we moved it, moved it, moved it to North Andover. Easy. Was, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we, yeah, so we went. We went to three different locations last year. We're going to three different locations again, again this year for those outdoor those outdoor shows. And you know, they're all the the the, the big idea behind these shows are that they're family friendly. You yeah. can bring you can bring anybody you want to come see come see the show, and it'll be fun. Yeah, it'll be fun. And we have great partners in in Newberry at Spencer Pierce the Little Farm. We have great partners in North Andover um with the uh with Smolak Farms mm-hmm. um and you know and 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 we're really excited about having new friends yeah. in in uh in June and July for our, for our, for our middle show there lovely all right yeah. well this is good so you guys got a packed schedule very um, packed schedule is there any uh, how does that come together out of a pandemic do you do because for me it seems like music and everything again we're talking you guys know him but it's John Moynihan <laughs> uh Firehouse Center for the Arts uh executive director and pretty much every other job now I would you just say uh but not anymore we're back I know we but have a full d- team now yeah but now you're experienced in everything so really yeah. you can just say man of all trades at the firehouse <laughs> or like uh, well, did you actually have to learn new like were there things that people did that like you were like okay uh johnny used to do this i've <laughs> never done that before thankfully not thankfully okay. not really i mean yeah. i mean part of part of my background when i was in portsmouth was that i did i did everything yeah you know i learned i learned all the production side i advanced bands i i i, I produced shows you yeah. know from the from the back end from yeah, the yeah. back end side of it the background of the background of it so that was that part wasn't wasn't the difficult the part and i've written grants so that that part wasn't the difficult part the difficult part was being the only person people who could come to with questions mm. about like you know you know one of the things that i that i feel very badly about um, is that when we auditioned for shows i just didn't have the bandwidth mm. to then tell people if they weren't in the show um, which is, you know, which is, which is difficult and it's unfair yeah. to the, you know, to the, to the folks who put themselves out there. So that's something that we had done previously and that we're back to doing, uh, that we're back to doing again. Is that a public apology but to those? That is. <laughs> I, to everybody that I never emailed back. This is why. I truly, I truly apologize. I just, my, my mind could not, could not do it. I tried. I'm I tried. sure people will understand. Yeah. Yeah. Do like a high school um, uh, cut list. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, know, oh, I wish we could have done that. I know. Right? If we could have been like, you're you're in the show. Yeah, that would have been that would have been fun. Do you know Dave Clay, the coach of uh, Newburyport basketball? No, I don't. No, great guy. Yeah. Uh, and he's been in that seat several times before. But he told me once that uh, he makes an effort. And one thing an old coach taught him, uh, and I think most coaches kind of do it this way now. I'm seeing a trend, but I remember that cut list thing. That was a real thing. Oh I yeah, played sports. I mean, people would run down to the gym. Oh, let's yeah. see who's on the list. That was like every sport. Yeah. Kind of cutthroat. He goes, anytime I cut a kid, I better have the heart to call him into my office and tell him why he didn't make the team. Yeah. What he can do better for the next year. Yeah. And I was like, no, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Anyway. So there have been, cool. And there have been times where people have asked like for the auditions, if, you know, what could be, what could be different? And I've, I try yeah. to be able to, I try to be able to, to respond, let them know. Yeah. Let them know. But so that was that was a lucky part that coming in from that end, I at least knew how to put mm-hmm. a show together and to make, you know, to make that work. I mean, like I like I said, like that first stage that we had, I built it. Yeah. We still use the same basic frame of it. We're going to we're going to you know, shore it up a little bit more yeah. this year since it's been rained on for the past two years, <laughs> but um, snowed on in one October. Mm-hmm. Um, but the one thing I did learn was video, video editing, yeah. and things like that. I always enjoy seeing it here when you have that ATEM set up because that's what we use as well. Yeah, that was. Yeah, I don't even know that. <laughs> I, I always say I have the easy part. Sarah Blackstone in there gets to do all the, uh, makes us look good. Yes, yeah, so well, thank you, Sarah, for making yeah. us look good. I know it's yeah. a hard job. It, 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 I mean, <laughs> <laughs> look at what she's dealing with here. Come on. It's um, extremely hard. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm excited because we we now have, we just hired our last full-time person for this sort of, this sort of go around. So now we have... You know, we have a full we have a full team. We have a production manager. We have mm-hmm. an associate artistic director. We have a director of operations. We have marketing development. Then we have a marketing associate. I mean, there's six of us now. Uh, year after it was one of us. Feels good. It feels it feels it feels very good. I mean, yeah. I as much as people give as much as people give you know the federal government and the state government a hard time, and it took them a while to to recognize the importance of the arts yeah. within you know within the nation and within and within the commonwealth since then they have really stepped up 
worked and and made a lot possible. And a lot of credit goes to uh, Mass Cultural Council and Mass Creative for continuing to advocate mm. for you know for the arts. And I would be remiss in not also giving um, major thanks to uh, our rep uh, Jim Calcourse and our Senator Diane DeZaglio, who both who both reached out um, and made sure that we were able to get a little bit of additional funding to, to keep the thing, keep everything going and uh -huh. to make sure that, that when we, um, that when we, when we step out, when we get step out of this, that we have the infrastructure in place yeah. that was, that was, that, that's, that, that's needed. Big name dropping from John Moynihan here. How about that? Hey, you know, I gotta, I gotta yeah. give credit, gotta give credit where credit is due. That's a good job. Give credit you. where credit is due. You and your names. Good for you. I have one more name to drop. Okay. Uh, for the three outdoor shows, we mm. are so grateful and thankful for to Newburyport Bank for coming on as the uh, as the lead sponsor for our. For They're our involved in everything, season. aren't they? They are. They, they are. They've been job. they've been uh, generous with the with the community for for yeah. for a long time. Very few and of those kind of. I know they're not a small bank anymore, but it's very it's a hometowny feel. You they know? are. They have yeah. that. They have that hometown feel. They have yeah. that hometown feel. Very much. Very similar to the institution for savings. Yeah. Who has been such such. A support of the firehouse for 30 plus years wow yeah they've they are they are the the spot our longest running sponsor right. they are our, our main stage sponsor um when i first wanted to move things outdoors i asked them for additional funding without even without even a second guess yeah. the question they 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 said yes anybody so. will give you money <laughs> <laughs> i wish it were that simple <laughs> I wish it were that simple but hey if you know if you know yeah. how to make that happen, yeah. Just shoot me a text, and I will. What do you need? Because well, we don't email, yeah. so oh, we right. text. Yeah. We text yeah, yeah. Back and forth. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> don't have any cash on me at the moment. That's okay. Hey, uh, no, that's all right. That's all right. That's all right. This uh, alone, it's this alone is uh, worth is worth. I mean, it's priceless. Is it is priceless. Is. Yes. Uh, our time yes. together. Yeah. Um, well, that's fantastic. So things yeah. are busy over there. Uh, Busier than they've ever been, which is both good and bad. Mm. Okay, that's good. A big statement because you've been pretty busy before. Yeah, no, but this is five five shows in over four months is a lot. What is it about that? Is Everything lot. is it just uh, is it just people have been cooped up? I mean, I feel like every musician I've ever known is like, let's go play. Yeah, yeah, and also, that's exactly yeah. that's exactly what it is. I mean, between between these these five shows, we I'm trying to I'm trying to think off the top of my head about how many people we have. We have over. You know, over seventy or eighty people. Yeah, just actors mm. on stage. Then you know, not including all of the all of the behind the scenes people. I mean, this 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 alone is going to be about a hundred. A hundred people are making all of this happen. It's unbelievable, right? I know, and you, and you don't and you don't and people don't think about that. They don't think about yeah. how much how much actually goes into it for every, every actor that you see on stage, mm. there's two people behind the stage that made it possible that they have that costume. They, their, their music sounds right. Or they have that, you know, they yeah. have that set. I mean, it's, 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 it's amazing. The amount of the amount of work that goes into something yep. that is up for, you know, for, for six weeks, did you run six in, months? Did of, you run into this too with backup people to even just the performers on stage? Because I mean, you have to have, I know maybe you don't have backups for every position, but did you have people that were like, okay, I got to know that role and that role in case somebody maybe gets the virus? Yeah, or something. we've yeah. done, we've had, we've had yeah. understudies. Was we've it done, you? Were you done, the one? There, there have been times. There really? have been times throughout. Um, you know, during um, uh, the first time we were outside, we did the the shows over at, at Spencer Pierce when we did our, our October shows. I had to be in, in two of the shows. Really, just Who? because of finding, you know, finding people because you know that was still so early on. That was mm -hmm. about six seven months into into all these people were still somewhat yeah those people were still rightfully so concerned even though we were fully masked yeah yeah um and then we, we didn't start taking off the masks and um until february and that was only in a very controlled environment where everybody had to yeah. have a negative test if they were showing up they had to they had to um uh you know say that they they weren't showing any any symptoms yeah. anything you know anything like that it was su it was such a con such a controlled uh environment there was no audience you know that you, was the first I, time you were checking all those but... people in i remember yeah you were cringing you're like i can't wait for the day yeah when i never have to ask that question I never have to ask that question and we're and you know we're kind of we're we're kind of at that 
yeah. uh, point. You know, we're oh, thank you. We're and, and yes, not and, every community know, is. Not every community is. Yeah. Not every community is, and we're we're trying to take our our cues off of you know off of what a lot of the what some of the local folks yeah are doing. You know, there are, there are, there are many of the other theaters in town uh, within the community are no longer requiring the vaccination or or mask. Masks are recommended. Mm-hmm. You know, so we're you know we're adopting that policy. Boston still is requiring masks. But Boston has so many more people that can come into yeah. come into come into the venues. But you can go to um, Logan now without a mask. And you can go to Logan now without Can't a mask. Can't be on the MBTA as as at this moment. Yeah. It could change at any moment. It could change at any I, could change at any moment. I feel like that might be kind of close. I d I don't know. I think I mean I think so, especially with the uh that latest ruling yeah. that just that just came well, down. Well even this so they were talking about it today. The ruling at the airport today, like yeah. people were, the workers were all still masked up because they go, we sent out a tweet last night from Logan Airport that said we still need the masks. So I guess we're all wearing the mask. They were confused there. Yeah. But I, I mean, guess I today think- they're literally pulling the signs down that says yeah. mask required. So, yeah, I mean, I still think, I still think that people should do whatever they feel most comfortable with. Yeah. And I think that, I think that wearing a mask in, in a public place isn't the, isn't, isn't the worst, you know, mm. the worst thing to do. And we want people to feel comfortable anyway they yeah. want to come to they want to come they want to come to the theater because what we want we want to give people that opportunity to honestly forget yeah that this is that that of what's what's going on i mean it never it will never be out of our minds completely yeah but seeing seeing the the the, the laughter on uh, this past saturday night or two saturdays ago uh when we were able to have that have that comedy and it's have mm. it be so real yeah, yeah yeah again it just it, it was it was really it was really nice to see that do you ever see a random thought do you ever see yourself doing more comedy over there yeah it's kind of a hard thing to find like yeah there. i know like I, they opened one in beverly i think just they to do fill right the need. off cabot right off cabot yeah which right. i thought i was thinking to myself i was like i don't really know too many local spots to go catch a comedy show yeah i mean that place on route one has been there like since i was you know kowloon no uh oh uh giggles oh giggles the prince pizza that's with the that's uh right. that's right. Right? giggles giggles yeah, yeah. That's right. But Kowloon's on the other side, and other they do side, yeah. they do comedy as well. Do they? Yeah, I didn't know that. I think actually. so. Mm. Yeah, I think that I think it's like Rolani Clark and all them. I thought, the, that, the I thought he was big on the Kegel side. I don't know. I, th- I think they do. Both. That's what I mean. It's not that well known. They just they just they just, they just walk across Route One. They do yeah. one at one at Giggles. Walk across right. the road and do it at Kowloon right after. Route One's its own little country. <laughs> it anyway. really is. Like, you know, it it's really it's uh, that doesn't that shouldn't count. I mean, like, but like local spots to see comedy, it's hard. Yeah, so we do it. I mean. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we were doing five or six a year. Five or six, and we'll yeah. continue. You know, we'll continue yeah. to do that. We have another one coming up on July tenth. Yep. Um, that we're excited about. It's a good number. So yeah, yeah. You know, it's gonna be. It's one of the, like the. I, I just. It's an. In, I would love to like try to be a stand-up comedian as long as they didn't have to like face the consequences of the devastation of like a bad night. Yeah. It's yeah, like, yeah, it yeah. just takes so much guts to get up there. I think that's such an adrenaline rush to go see. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. But, I don't know. I've yeah. always felt that about the comedy thing. No, I agree. Um, and then one other point you just said that you wanted to hit on the mask thing. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, don't you find it interesting? I bet you will. That the, uh, you know, we're talking about being in this kind of in between and people still masking up if they want to. Like, I'm never one to say, uh, you know, put a mask on. Yeah. That's, I think we're beyond that point. But I'm also like, I can't get the people that are like, I can't believe you're wearing a mask. What is wrong yeah, with you? Like, that's the hill you're going to want to like die on is like the uh, portraits of words in a pandemic. But like, <laughs> you're, like you're going to like, you're going to like choose that to be like the viral moment of, oh, you dork, you're wearing a mask. Like, really? Yeah. So I mean, and there, like that. Uh, there are, there are. And, 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 and it's funny because we all, you know, we all think a little bit differently mm. now. Like if I, if I'm going to the grocery store, like I'll have a mask with me in the event that I'm walking by someone, they're like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, so, and you look at and, and, and it's it's weird because you know before you'd be like, oh, they must have a cold. Yeah. And now it's I don't know what that is. So <laughs> yeah, here yeah. we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, and even though and even though so many of us are are vaccinated and 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 boosted yeah. now, you know, we're just we just have to continue to 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 be as vigilant and yep. make decisions make decisions that are that we're most that we're most comfortable with. At no point are we ever going to be able to please everybody exactly you know well i think in a lot of cases including um hopeful hopeful for your place as well so many of these places have gone to music venues uh, any theater plays i've gone to a couple plays now any 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 bar that yeah. has me like it just seems like people are loving the live entertainment like, absolutely anyway and it feels like it's kind of i'm sure you expected an initial burst but uh, i really kind of hope it continues it seems like people realize they really really missed that and they're yeah. never going to take it for granted again which uh i think so 
I mean, I, th- I think so. I think, I think, well, especially over the next couple of years, yeah. I think that people will No, I mean forever, at- John. <laughs> I, I mean forever. I think that's your recency bias <laughs> yes. uh, coming, coming through, coming through. Um, yeah, I mean, I, th- I, def- I, I definitely, you know, I definitely agree. And I hope, I'm hopeful that, that over the next, you know, over the next few years yeah. that we, that, that people do recognize really what they were missing by not being able to be with people mm. for for as long you know as long as they were i mean the, we were we were closed we couldn't physically have people in the space for 16 months yeah you know it wasn't until july of last year that we were allowed to do it and then it wasn't until october of last year that we actually welcomed people back in yeah which is just you know it's so it's just so crazy it's insane when you when you when you think about it, it seems like so much time has passed yet really none. Does. You know, but yet oh. yet no yet no still time makes has me cringe a little bit. Yeah. The whole time thing is all so messed up. It really is. It really is. I've, things happen. Like I was thinking obviously the marathon was only six months away. I know you we we just talked running a lot because right. you know, I know you you and Sarah were thinking about doing the marathon together. They didn't do that by the way. If we you didn't we should have. Yeah. Tough to get into. Sarah. Next year, <laughs> next <Yeah>. April, <laughs> this is my challenge to you. Let's do it. Oh, wow. Let's You're, do it, Sarah. You challenged her like uh, I wouldn't do. No, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, well, on behalf of the community, John Moynihan, thank you so much for keeping this place running by yourself for a long period of time. Well, thank you. And uh, and now we hope uh, all the best. And go check out some shows here as we go. And uh, he's got a full lineup. Where do you guys put, post the lineup? You good with the website thing? Yeah, visit our website, yeah. www.firehouse.org. You can find it. You, you know how funny it is? People still say www, but so, you don't need to anymore. Some people still use email constantly. I know. That's fair. That's fair. But no, but every time, like, I, I just I just realized that every time I talk yeah. about it, I say www.firehouse.org, but no one types that in anymore. Hmm. Just go to firehouse.org. You'll find it. Oh, so yeah. The, the W's <laughs> are really annoying there. I'm it trying to think of it. Well, it's just because yeah. it automatically yeah. pops up now. I guess I say, I, nah. yeah, I guess I wouldn't say the W's. Right. Yeah, right? Yeah. Well, it's a I, weird quirk, right? I yeah. don't know. I, it's your w, thing, though. W, w, w. <laughs> it's, it's your <laughs> thing, though. I guess so. I think you keep it. I guess so. You know, it's, it's how people w, know. W, w, w. Yeah. Exactly. You know, I remember an anchor giving a lesson back in the day when I was young. I always said, "Drives are crazy when people don't pronounce the the W. It's W's, like two U's. Right. Like the George W was a big thing. Yeah. W. Right. W." It's right. interesting to think about, right? That is Two U's, W. But can you imagine saying? <laughs> do you want me for the comedy routine? I know, right? Sorry. But can you also can you Sorry. imagine saying www.firehouse.org? Your thing. I mean, it's awful <laughs> saying it that way. <laughs> so you got to do this. You got to keep it. That we just hit the moment of the show, by the way, when Sarah realizes that's what he's going to end the show with. Yeah, that is it. W letter lesson. Yeah, the letter of the day is W. There you go, kids. Uh, the number of the day is five. For that's how many shows the firehouse oh, is doing this summer. Done. <laughs> nicely done. Final thought. You get to you get the tape. Uh, thanks to the community. Come on out and see us. Uh, you get the stage. Yeah. So so as you know, as Drew said, thank you. Drew thanks me for the, for the on the behalf of the community for keeping the firehouse open. But quite mm-hmm. honestly, it was the community that kept the firehouse open. It was the community that that continued to step up and continues to step up to ensure that we are you know that we are there from our sponsors to our fantastic board members to every donor you know who's donated five dollars all the way up to fifty thousand. We could not Whoa. be here without you. Fifty thousand. Never mind. We won't get into that. <laughs> yeah, there's some people. There, there's some foundations. Um, but we honestly we couldn't be here. We couldn't be here without you. The firehouse would not have survived with without you so thank you from the bottom of my heart and thank you from from the uh the bottom of the boards and and everybody in this community's heart for for keeping keeping the firehouse alive um and we're really looking forward to you know the next 30 years wow nice look into the camera and everything for that you You stopped looking at me you didn't care about me anymore i I always care about you drew well that's nice but for that for that (laughs) moment it was touching um John Moynihan, Center for the Arts, Firehouse Center for the Arts. Always a pleasure to uh, sit down and talk with him a little bit. Sarah Blackstone doing a heck of a job dealing with me, mostly. Uh, (laughs) I can be difficult. Um, And doing a great job producing the show. Uh, Get to the Firehouse when you can this summer. And uh, not just this summer. And we're not quite in the summer yet. Spring, summer. Get to the Firehouse. It's a great spot. We love it. Uh, Live at Drew's House, Shop Afternoon Drive. Another edition. Thanks, John. Thanks, Drew.